going to walk through how to create a shape map in Flourish, what's known as a choropleth map. This is choropleth maps. Um, so maps were different shapes, different parts, different areas are coloured in different ways. I'm going to show you how to create one of those um, with a, a custom set of shapes. So in other words, a set of areas or boundaries that are not already in Flourish. And we're going to do this to um, Birmingham wards. So in this particular situation, we're looking to uh, create a map with the wards of Birmingham, so the different parts of Birmingham that uh, elect different councils. Now, uh, what you can do in Flourish and other visualization tools is create your own shape map like these. And in order to do that, you need to have the boundaries of the um, areas themselves. So if I Google, for example, create custom map in Flourish, um, this actually takes you through the process to some extent. And uh, the main thing to bear in mind is that you need a GeoJSON file with the shapes of the boundaries that you want. So what you need to do is search for the boundaries that you want, in this case Birmingham wards, and add the word GeoJSON because what you want is um, files that are in this GeoJSON format. Now the first result looks quite promising because it's it's from um, Birmingham City Council. Um, you would go here and, and go to the resource. Um, this doesn't look like GeoJSON. Um, what you're looking for is something that looks a little bit like this. It's got lots of curly brackets and things like that. However, um, this doesn't have any coordinates in it, which would be used to draw the shape. So this actually doesn't work. Instead, I'm going to show you this one. This is um, on Carto, which is a mapping tool. And actually, this is a, a map that I created some years ago. Um, and the nice thing with maps on Carto is that if I go to this map, there is a download option. If you click on that download option on a map on Carto, you will have a number of different options in terms of how you want to export that data set. And the option you obviously want here is GeoJSON because that's the file format that Flourish and other tools use. Some tools will use SHP, what's called a shapefile. Um, some will use KML, but in our case, we're using GeoJSON. So if we click on that, it's gonna download that data to our desktop. And at this point, we can switch to Flourish and create a new visualization to use those shapes. Now, on the projection maps section, you will see um, there are a number of built-in shapes, um, US uh, counties, UK constituencies, but we don't have wards in the UK or indeed um, Birmingham specifically, just their wards. So we can click on blank to upload our own GeoJSON. If I click on that, I will get a blank visualization. And what I need to do is go to the data tab here and upload the data um, here. So I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna quickly locate the file that um, I just um, downloaded. And you will see it's been added to the map on Flourish. And uh, we can tell it's worked because this geometry column here, column A, we can actually see the shapes of each ward. We can see the boundary of each ward. But if you go to the preview, it will be blank. And the reason for this is that you need to tell it that this is not a world map. So at the moment, over here on the right hand side, you will see the projection area which is already opened up. This has a bounds section which is um, defaults to world. 
what we want to select is auto and if we select auto it will automatically um, limit itself to the boundaries of the uh, shapes the boundaries that we've imported as data um, so actually on the world view it's probably there somewhere but it's it's really really small on the auto view it's just setting the boundaries to the edges of, of the of the shapes that we've imported and as you hover over it you'll be able to see the different shapes of the different boundaries that you've imported so this has worked we've now got the boundaries into flourish the only thing we need to do now is actually um, include some values that will be used to color code each of these areas so that people can actually see um, the differences between them and to do this you go back into data and um, we just need to create an extra column for those values so I'm going to insert mine between B and C um, let's call this um, what can we do let's just say crimes okay so I'm going to put some random numbers in here and I'm not going to do all 40 of them but I'm going to do enough I've done about 15 so that when I go back um, I can start to use those values to color code. In fact, there's one thing I need to do first, which is, <coughs> excuse me, on this right hand side, um, I need to specify that that column, the C column, is going to be used as a value. And you can see the preview automatically changes once I've done that. So, um, what this is doing this box over here uh, up until now if I just delete that again so you can see what it was like before up until then only one column in our data was actually being used in the map and that was column A and we can tell it was being used because it's a color whereas all the other unused columns are gray and it happens to be the color pink but you can see that it might be purple or other colors for other columns that are being used um, and we can add, uh, we can specify that different columns are used for different aspects of this visualization by filling these boxes here. So, for example, the um, the name of the uh, uh, ward is in column H. So I, I might put that into that column, and now that becomes active. It's now being used in a visualization. And of course, we've already said that the value that we want to use is in column C. We don't have to use all of these boxes, but this is how we can start to build our visualization. So we've got a column with the shapes in them, we've got a column with the names in them, and we've got a column with the values that are going to be used to color code. Now I can return to my preview and start to customize this a little bit further. And probably the one other thing that I'm going to want to customize is the color code that's being used. At the moment we've got quite an, uh, an ugly colour code and legend which uses a different colour for each number and we've got the legend which um, labels each number separately. We don't want to do that because we're not dealing with categorical data, we're not dealing with a number of different categories each of which have their own colour and their own um, legend. What we want is a kind of a sliding scale of colours. So if we um, go to, uh, let me remember where this is, whether it's, uh, uh, is it regions layer? Yes, it's regions layer. So if you go to the regions layer, you'll notice the colors um, are controlled here. And it says um, scale type, and currently this is set to categorical. So this is assuming that we're dealing with categorical data. We're not dealing with categorical data, we're dealing with numeric data. So if you switch it to numeric, you will then get this sort of sliding scale of colors um, along a particular type, you know, one particular color. Um, and this looks more meaningful. And our legend has changed as well to indicate the range of colors from a minimum to a maximum value. Now, if you want to go a little bit further, you can specify whether this is what's called a sequential color scheme. A sequential color scheme is one that just goes from the lowest to the highest value. 
or a diverging colour scheme which starts at a midpoint and then diverges in two different directions along two different scales. Um, a classic example of this would be temperature if you had zero in the middle and then temperatures higher or lower than zero would be coloured differently. And you can specify what this might be. So for example, um, I might want it the other way around rather than red to blue. So that's all I want to cover in, in this video. That's how to find some GeoJSON for the boundaries that you want to visualize, how to download it, import it into Flourish, and then make sure that your map is working in terms of um, coloring each of those regions differently. You'll remember that all of these other regions aren't colored because I didn't type a value into this column C. So these are the, the um, cells down here which are empty. And if I start to color those, you'll see them appear in the preview. Now, you might be wondering about these other tabs, points and lines. We don't have to use these, and I'm not using them in this map. Um, the points tab can be used to add any extra um, positions on your maps or landmarks, things like that. Um, it's filled with some template data, which you can just delete. Um, but if you did want to add points, you could do that here. And likewise, lines is used to add lines on top of the map if you wanted to show routes or rivers or things like that. And again, we don't need to use that. I'm just going to give the name to my visualization, and that's it.